You are a visionary, an entrepreneur, a business owner. You want to make money from your passion and create the freedom that you've dreamed of. But it's slow. The income is slow, the impact is slow, and the freedom is slow. And here's the kicker. You've actually never been busier. You're working longer than ever, burning through daylight, and your family have forgotten who you are. You're tired and frustrated and you can't even sleep well at night. The business just feels so heavy and all you ever wanted to do was just make the money you want to make doing the things that you want to do. And that's where I come in. Hi, if we haven't met yet, my name is Dr. Brooklyn Storm and I'm the host of the Business Acceleration Podcast where we shift your business from heavy to light, time poor to time abundant and from income light to income growth. We're going to achieve it together with my 20 years experience as a psychologist, helping people just like you to break through their barriers. And we're going to throw in a little of the woo as well. So thank you so much for pushing play today. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business Acceleration Podcast. I am so pleased that you're here because if you're somebody who's been having difficulty building their team, finding the right staff, even finding good quality candidates and applicants for your position, then this is absolutely the podcast for you. And the reason I'm saying that is because I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience with recruiting and uh, finding team for my private practice and now for my coaching business in Melbourne, Australia. So I guess when I moved from working at the Bulk Billy Medical Clinic to having, you know, a separate standalone private practice. One of the things that happened was very quickly I realized that I needed to hire more people to come and help me with all of the work. I had never had to deal with any of that before because when I was working at the medical practice, they would just take care of everything for me. They would do all of the admin, they would manage waiting lists, they would triage clients, all of that. But when I moved out onto my own, I started having to take on that responsibility. And yeah, what happened was because I was inexperienced and didn't really know what I was doing, my books got really full quite quickly. And I feel very, very, very uncomfortable having a waiting list. So in general, my diary, I will only book it out to maximum three weeks ahead Um, generally I just leave it at two. I just don't, it's a personal thing and it's not a rule or a judgment or anything like that. But for me, I just don't think it's ethical to leave somebody waiting for help if they really need it for longer than that. So I tend to, you know, notify the doctors or I'll, um, tell the clients, look, you know, this is the deal with the waiting period, but there are these psychologists in our area that you might like to go to. And so I encourage them to go back to their doctors. I give them the the name of two or three psychologists in the area and they can get a referral out to them instead. But what happened was people were saying, no, 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 no. We want to come to this particular practice and we don't mind if we see you. Um, We're happy to see somebody else. But the thing was, I didn't have anybody else. So I'm already at capacity. I already have the next few weeks fully booked. And I've got clients who don't want to go anywhere else. They kind of want to stay here. So yeah, as I said, I was just green and inexperienced and had no idea what I was doing. Anyway, so then I think, yep, sure. Okay, I'll hire somebody. So I write up an ad and I put it out there. And within a few days, I get, you know, a lot of applications. And I would say maybe well, for me, it seemed like a lot because I just kept filling up my inbox, but I would say maybe there were 30 or 40 within the first two days, but they weren't people who lived in Australia. They weren't people who had a background in allied health or coaching or psychology or anything like that at all. Um, the people who had applied that were in Australia, weren't qualified, had never done the job before. They were from retail industries or, you know, there were truck drivers that were applying. It was just a mess. It was just a, a real mess. And I was sitting there scratching my head and feeling really disheartened. And, you know, worse than that, I felt like I was just under so much pressure because now this waiting list is building, which doesn't align well with me. So now I'm feeling badly that I can't help these people. And I'm feeling badly about myself, you know, how come I'm getting such a poor quality 
candidate pool, you know, what am I doing wrong? And here's the thing, I'm experiencing recruitment. So (laughs) you would think I knew something about what I was doing, but it turns out that, you know, my recruitment experience was was some time ago and I was working mostly with doctors and recruiting doctors and getting them placed and things like that. And doctors are a whole other kettle of fish (laughs) when it comes to allied health. That's completely different again. So anyway, I was stuck and I didn't know what to do. And it cost a small fortune to list an advertisement online. You know, it was like, I think it was about $360 to put it on one job site. And then it was you know, 265 to put it on another one, just the industry job sites. And then we had like the main job site, one of the main job sites in Australia, which is called seek.com. I think I I spent 365 putting it there and just, yeah, I was getting nothing. And then I was thinking, well, what's everybody else doing? And then I saw that everybody else was struggling as well to find clients and, oh, sorry, candidates. And then anyway, I thought, okay, I'm going to do a little bit of research here and have a look at what's going on. So I looked at other people's job advertisements and all of a sudden the penny dropped because I realized when I'd written my job advertisement for a psychologist, I had written it the way I had been trained to write job advertisements when I was recruiting, which was very formal, very professional, very stiff. You know, you have to say, it's almost like a job description and you have to say, these are the minimum requirements. Um, You know, somebody has to be registered with their professional body. They need Medicare. They have to be qualified. Uh, We're a friendly team, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And I thought, that's the big problem here. The problem is it didn't align with the way I'd written the ad using that approach did not align with my actual business because my business is, um, well, the brand personality of All Psyched Up is that it's kind of new age, you know, we've got the crystals and the incense and everything happening. We've got tea infusion on the counter for everybody to have a refreshment. We have a guest book. We have clients that can sit down and type up favorite quotes of theirs that have helped them during tough times and we um, frame them and put them on the walls and we rotate those every month so everybody gets a chance at having their quote on the wall so we've got all it's kind of this personality our um branding is that we've got my dog Gabe you know as part of the logo he's there in the middle of a great big lotus flower because he was the first dog on the peninsula to be um you know uh, trained in as an animal therapy dog so anyway we've got this is our sort of brand and none of that was really reflected in my advertisement and so then I started you know I love law of attraction and I love understanding cosmic laws and how they apply to business and that's my thing and uh, you know those of you who've been following me for a while understand that I now integrate spirituality and those spiritual laws with my business so I thought here's a really great opportunity for me to do that with recruiting let's give it a go and see what happens so that's what I did I sat down and I got out the pen and paper because for me, journaling is really powerful, but I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I mean, you might be better with a different tool, but I just got a pen and paper and I started writing out, you know, my vision for the business and my vision for the practice. And I started thinking about, you know, uh, where I wanted the business to be in a few years. And in my mind's eye, I could see the people that were there, the people that were working there, I could see the clients that were coming through. I got a sense of the atmosphere. I could tap into things like sounds, sights, smells. You know, I just tried to put as much into this imaginary vision, this this scene that I was creating in my mind's eye as I possibly could. And once I'd written out all of that, I felt differently about recruiting. And I felt excited and lit up. And then straight away, I um, whipped out the laptop, you know, my rose gold MacBook Air, and I quickly started typing out a job advertisement like you've probably not seen before. (laughs) And I posted it. I posted it on my profile. I posted it on the um, website for the business. I posted it in a few different places. And let me tell you, 
it caused a little bit of um, controversy because some people started doing things like they were giving it likes and hearts on, on Facebook and uh, Instagram, people were saying, wow, this is like a really cool job ad. And then other people were saying to me, um, this probably isn't too professional. <laughs> you might want to rewrite it. And they didn't like it because they were saying, well, it's outside of the, the box and, you know, it's not how you should be writing a job ad, Brooklyn. So, you know, um, please reconsider it. And um, can you believe that? They're actually peers people I've never met before in my profession <laughs> that were private messaging me, telling me that my advertisement was not to their liking because it was outside of the box. So, of course, that just made me want to promote it even more, right? <laughs> and that's what I did. And then anyway, what happened from there was other people started contacting me and saying, oh, wow, I love this job ad. Can you help me write one? And then it sort of became a thing. And so now I help other people write job ads too. Now, I don't recruit very often. I do contract work, so the work comes in cycles and stuff like that. And anyway, my team have been just an amazing team. And now I'm at the point where the work is increasing and I want to scale. So I'm now wanting to step back more from psychology and focus more on the spiritual side of, of business and on business coaching and supporting private practice owners with that side of things rather than having face-to-face -face clinical time with clients. And so for that reason, I thought, hmm, okay, well, if my goal is, you know, to start stepping back early next year, I probably want to start looking for somebody now. And it was just so funny because I went into a couple of the groups that I'm in and, you know, the first posts that pop up were people saying how hard it was to recruit. And I just thought, it's not hard. You just don't know how to do it in a way that feels right for you. That's all. Anyway, so then I write this ad and the ad just kind of goes on for a bit. It's like kind of a long ad, but I'm loving it. It's not perfect. Uh, you know, there's probably a typo in it because you know me, I just get carried away with things and I don't check my spelling and stuff. So there's probably a typo missing and there might be a word missing here and there, but the general gist of uh, the, advers the advertisement has been really, really great. And <laughs> the first day, can you believe I had over, um, well, 10 applications from candidates who were suitably qualified and met the criteria. They were registered psychologists living in Melbourne, experienced, um, who think the same as me and who want to work in a place that gets it, who um, want to work for or with somebody that understands the importance of you know, all of this other stuff and the, and the brand personality and everything. So it was really, really great because I know that that's a different experience to what a lot of my colleagues are, are having. So that gave me confidence that I was on the right on the right track. So anyway, then um, I got notifications uh, that we'd had four inquiries also from registered psychologists, and this is great because one of them I actually spoke with this morning. And, you know, it's Sunday morning and I try not to work on a Sunday, um, but I was doing a bit of work anyway because I'm, you know, the book that I published, uh, I've been in touch with a couple of um, bookstores overseas and so I was having a Zoom with one of them. So I thought, yep, that's fine. I can talk to that candidate. And so we spoke, we had a Zoom catch up and you know, she was just lovely and I wanted to give her the job on the spot, <laughs> but I didn't because I thought um, I don't want to act on impulse and I want to meet the other candidates first. I was originally only going to hire two people, but now I'm thinking maybe I'll, I might be able to hire three. Um, we'll just have to have a look at how that goes. At the same time, I don't want to get too big, but the interesting thing was that all of these psychologists who have applied are working for other psychologists, private practice owners in the area. So, yeah, um, it's recruiting is something that can be hard if you don't know what to do. And I think the thing is that as business owners, whether you're running a coaching business or a private practice or whatever, you're probably getting your guidance around how to write a job ad from somebody who 
it doesn't know how to write a job ad um, effectively or um, successfully or, or powerfully. But I guess my best advice to you would be, you know, there, there are a few myths. So first of all, the, the first myth is recruiting is hard. That's BS. It's not hard. It's only hard when you don't know what you're doing. And you can absolutely find out how to do it by asking for help. Okay. And don't ask other psychologists for help or other coaches for help. Ask people who are doing it and who are doing it well and who are doing it effectively and who are getting really great results from their advertising and from their recruiting campaigns. Uh, The other thing that people struggle with is they say, oh, well, you know, you can't find anybody to work in your team because there's a shortage of candidates. That's a load of BS. There is not a shortage of candidates. The issue is you're not writing a job advertisement that's inspiring somebody to want to come and work with you. You're talking about yourself. You're not talking about them. And then when you do talk about them, you're putting demands on them in the ad right? So a typical ad will probably be something like, we want a psychologist slash physio slash dietitian slash social worker slash OT slash coach, whatever it is, to work for our friendly team who's growing, blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to have a bit about in this role, you need to be able to and you're going to put all of the tasks that they need to be able to do, like use a computer, um, et cetera, et cetera. Then you're going to have you must, and these are the non-negotiables, and you probably write something like you must be qualified, you must be registered, you must have five years experience. Who wants to read that ad? Come on. I don't. As soon as I look at that ad, it looks like every other flippin' ad that you see online for an allied health position. It's so boring. It bores me to tears. If I didn't have my psychology practice and I was, you know, wanting to go and do some work, I am not going to go and apply for a job that looks so vanilla that I I just think to myself, oh my God, you know, I, I can't. Like there's no way I can go and work for these people because it just feels so bland and I don't want to work for anywhere that's bland I want to work for somewhere that has personality that has a bit of life to it that stands for something that stands for something that I also stand for that is a little bit disruptive perhaps in their industry that shares the same values as me that's what I want to hear about and I don't want a company just to list what their values are I want them to show me what their values are through, you know, examples of what they're doing or through the way that they speak or the way that they share information, things like that. You know, I think as a business owner that's trying to recruit, the worst thing you can do is go online and look at everybody else's ad and, you know, create a template based on everybody else's ad. Because guess what? Everybody else is struggling to get the clients. So by you creating a template for yourself based on their ads, the outcome is that you're going to struggle as well. And then you're going to be part of the, you know, struggle brigade online, you know, complaining about how hard it is to find someone. It doesn't have to be like that. The other thing that I hear too and that I see is like, well, you know what, it's better to take this candidate, um, even though they don't meet all of my criteria, rather than no candidates at all because I just have too much work and I need help yesterday. That's a really big mistake because guess what? That person who didn't meet all of your criteria when they applied that you took out of desperation is going to wind up being the biggest headache down the track the biggest headache because they're going to, there's going to be a skill deficit there. There's going to be an attitude issue there. There's going to be um, demands made down the track on you and your business and you as a business owner down the track. It's going to, this person didn't meet your criteria from the outset. It is not better to take them than to not have anybody it causes more harm than good. It might feel like it's taking some work off your plate in the short term, but in the long term, it's going to cost you. It can cost you relationships with referrers. It can cost you relationships with your clients. It can cost you more referrals. 
it can impact on your business reputation it's not worth it don't do it if you're super stuck and you've got so much work you can't handle it then you put other systems in place to cope with that in the interim like I do or like other people do perhaps like a triage system or you know shutting down your your books or perhaps even changing the way that you're advertising so if you're in a position where you're needing to advertise or your books are getting full and you're anticipating that you're going to need to advertise it's always good to do that about two months out and the reason for that is because it can take time to find the right match for your business so even though, for example, I got, you know, what seems to be like quite a high number of good quality candidates for my job in less than 24 hours, when I meet with them face to face, they might not be the best match for my business. Okay. At the moment, they're looking great on paper, um, but I haven't met them yet. And I don't know how we're going to get along. And so I'm not just going to take anybody. You have to really see that when you meet with somebody, you're taking the right person for your business that's going to help grow the business in the direction that you want to grow it. And it's a collaborative relationship. You are both giving and taking from each other. Okay. That's probably a whole other podcast to to talk about. But anyway, if you want to recruit staff, you do it um, about two months ahead of when you actually need somebody so that then you've got a person on your team that's right, you've had time to train them, you can do handovers, you can do all of that sort of jazz, okay? The other thing too is do not write an advertisement in the way that everybody else is writing one, otherwise you'll get the results that everybody else is getting. Look for people who seem to be finding it easier to get the right candidates and approach them discreetly and just say hey can you give me a hand with this and I think you'll find most people are really happy to help out a colleague or uh, you know a friend or somebody else in the profession and they can walk you through uh, how you can improve upon your advertisement so that it's resonating with the ideal candidate for that position okay Uh, And the third thing, of course, is when you write your job advertisement, hold in mind the vision that you have for your practice, okay? Um, And that means really tuning into where you see the practice, maybe in 12 months, maybe in three years, maybe in five. Thinking about that will help you write an advertisement that's going to speak to the right person. And Instead of telling, try and show what your values are in the way you conduct yourself um, or the way you write this particular um, advertisement. I will put a link to um, my website. You can go and have a look on there for some inspiration or some ideas um, and hopefully that will help you a little bit um the other thing too is if you're somebody who's struggling with things like recruiting and you want a bit of a hand I'm happy to help you as well the next round of coaching begins in January 2020 and there's two places left so um three have gone already and we haven't started advertising this is the first time I've mentioned it but if you want to apply for 2020 let me know. I'll put my email in the link um, and feel free to contact me and I will look forward to talking with you then. Have a beautiful day. You can have the team that you want. You just have to write the ad that's going to attract them. Okay. It's that easy, honestly. All right, guys, have a wonderful day and talk to you later. Bye. Thank you so much for listening today. I really hope that you enjoyed it and got a lot of value from it. Help me help others by sharing this podcast. And if you feel called to leave a review on Apple Podcasts, remember to let me know so that I can send you a very special thank you gift. Now go and build your dream business and I will see you next time. Bye.